Gentlemen, welcome back to the Starting a Business, Building a Brand vlog. This is big number 171. And as Aaron said in last week's vlog, uh, all the employees here at HQ will be kind of putting together a different style of vlog for you guys this week. Uh, Aaron has his Menfluential conference, and so he is busier than busy. Uh, he's always busy, but he's even busier this week. And so um, we, you know, we graciously decided to help him out and uh, and film this vlog. And so. Uh, we, we asked for questions uh, on our YouTube community tab and in the comments of the last vlog, kind of pertaining to different people on our team and their specialties and, and what they do for T. Shanley. And, uh, and actually, it helped us strike uh, a really cool idea um, to kind of break down a concept that we talk about pretty often here at T. Shanley, and Aaron has definitely mentioned it in previous vlogs. And, and, and that concept is the, the funnel. Um, the funnel, the marketing funnel, essentially, or uh, the customer funnel. And so uh, Aaron definitely talks about it all the time. I don't think we've ever broken it down before. And so I'm gonna be bringing in um, a few members of our team uh, for the three separate areas of this, how we define our funnel, which is um, acquisition at the top, uh, conversion in the middle, and then retention at the bottom. It's gonna be a disaster. It's not gonna be a disaster. It will be a disaster. All right, so as I promised, here is a kin. Hello. He is not only my boss, but he, he runs. I uh, hate that word. Yeah, he does hate that word. But he runs, based, he's the digital marketing, director of digital marketing. Yep. And so uh, with, with a heavy focus on acquisition. So I'm gonna let him take it away with kind of what he, the, 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 the main structure of our acquisition funnel and, uh, and then his parts. So, uh, we have uh, really a four levels to our uh, entire marketing program. The top half is prospecting and remarketing. Um, uh, about 80, 70, 80 percent of what I do is strictly focused on that side of the funnel, that half of the funnel. On prospecting, prospecting is targeting people that have never been to our website. So they have never um, uh, they don't know teach that is prospecting uh, as far as remarketing remarketing means that they have come to the website but they have not bought the moment you buy you move to the actives or retention funnel that Lauren is going to talk to you guys about so on prospecting we are our main goal is to drive good quality traffic it's, uh, visitors that are not bouncing yeah it is uh, people that are spending lots of time on site and uh, it's driving traffic, obviously. But, but you, you have to kind of take it with, you know, at different angles. For example, with SEO, specifically SEO, if somebody search for something very specific, right? Yeah. They, they, they search for acne around mouth um, and we have a blog post on it. They come to that blog <clears throat> and they spend a couple of minutes reading that blog. They don't have to necessarily take any other action. If they spend two or three minutes reading that blog, soaking it in, that's a success. So the KPI for prospecting is quite different than KPI for remarketing. Once you come to the website, the prospecting has done its job and you stayed on the site or you looked at multiple pages, that's even better. So if you do not purchase, then our remarketing uh, engine kicks in. Remarketing is us showing ads to people that came to the site but did not buy. So there, the key performance indicator becomes cost per acquisition. So there, at, uh, you know, CPA, cost per acquisition, is also one of the KPIs we have looked at on prospecting. On prospecting, we, can, we are shooting for a much higher CPA versus remarketing. Remarketing CPA has to be super, super low. So if you are looking at as long as our leads are really hot and they're good leads, we should be able to convert them in, in, in secondary remarketing much easier than right. in prospecting. And so that's how, that's how you can define whether traffic is good or not. That's right. Um, can you just give people a description of kind of the main platforms you're using um, for, for our uh, top of funnel, our prospecting, and then our remarketing? Sure, sure of course. So on prospecting, uh, as you guys know, we use influencers very heavily, thanks to this guy. He has been uh, leading that um, channel very successfully. Um, influencers, number one. Number two, not in certain order, 
SEO uh, providing great content so that we um, provide value. And SEOs, both influencers and SEO are basically strictly in that top funnel prospecting. That's um, right. We're not usually hitting people that have seen us before. It's a very small percentage. That's right. Mm -hmm. After SEO, probably our paid search programs across Google, Yahoo, Bing, wherever uh, we, we are on about seven, eight different platforms in paid search. And then obviously social channels. Uh, we use um, Facebook, Instagram uh, heavily uh, for prospecting. Um, it, there the goal is really thinking about a specific audience and then thinking about messaging that's going to resonate with that audience and then showing them ads and then letting those ads run for a couple of days, maybe a week. And then we just look at it. Did it work or did it not work? If it works, we expand it. If it doesn't work, we just shut it down. So we are on an ongoing, nonstop, you know, practice of always be testing. The most important thing there and the, what a kid spends a lot of his time on is optimization. And so it's one thing to get something up and, and, and out into the world. It's another thing to, um, after a certain period of time, like you just mentioned, about a week, um, go back, look at the performance and see where we can improve. Uh, if there's ways to improve, we improve on it. If there, if there isn't a way to improve, we just shut it down. There's no magic bullet here. Uh, you have to put in the hard work. In remarketing, uh, probably the, the king is our display ads. Uh, we are using both banner ads, traditional banner ads, as well as uh, social ads in our remarketing program. As Josh hinted, and I cannot emphasize this enough, you really need to think about what messaging you are going to have at the prospecting level versus remarketing level. I'd say that in remarketing, really, the, the key to success is really thinking about how do you create value for those site visitors. If, if your ad isn't, isn't consistent with your website and isn't consistent with the what's in the box that you're sending them and what emails are getting after the purchase there has to be some sort of co cohesive flow um, otherwise there's just a huge uh, uh, disconnect between all the content you're sending people all right guys so on the conversion side of things on the website conversion side of things um, uh, I did my best to get someone from the office to participate and everyone declined and so um, I have this, this speaker right here. I'm showing the camera, the speaker, Rob. Uh, and, <laughs> and Rob is on the phone right now. Uh, most of you probably recognize him from previous vlogs. And uh, he has been at the helm of our e-commerce for uh, the, the better part of basically three years at the, this point. Yeah, early, early days was about, so if you think about it, you know, Aaron was, uh, is a co-founder and we knew initially our marketing plan was um, Aaron do some great videos like you always do and uh, and send traffic our way you know and so our what we designed the site for was was that was you know as simple as possible then when we started to to grow up <laughs> through, the, through the months and, and year we uh, you know that's when we we decided you know we, we've got to we, there's many other forms of traffic obviously that you bring into into a website once you get you get it going especially when and we brought a pin on board correct I'm sorry especially when we brought a pin on board I'd, I'd say is when the, a lot of those needs changed a bit <laughs> yes yes and no um, we had we worked with agencies so you know we we had agencies that were helping us with uh, initially with SEO. Um, you know, we had agencies working with us with Facebook advertising and remarketing. Um, you know, so there, there, were, uh, there was definitely other traffic coming in. Uh, Pay-per-click we had going on. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and, you know, it wasn't doing a, it wasn't doing a lot of great convert, conversion. Um, went to yet another agency to help us, um, you know, with, with conversion optimization. And, um, and we learned a lot there. You know, we learned a lot of, uh, um, you know, we did a lot of testing, a lot of A-B testing um, on different aspects of the site. And, uh, and so, you know, and we, we changed the site. The site kind of morphed over the period of time. It was probably about six months that we worked with that company. Yeah, and so, and so that's where you, you saw a lot, a lot of changes going on at that time. But the morphing of the site, um, you know, over the year, and year and a half to two years, you know, before we, we we are where we are. 
um, you know, we, we sat back, I think it was basically last summer, and we said, man, we've you know, done these changes with, for optimizing conversions and things. And we've done this, we've done that for SEO. And we felt like it was all kind of, it started to feel like it was all, it was cobbled together as a website. And so that's when we decided, uh, look, look, why don't we go out we, and, 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 you know, we, we vetted a bunch of different um, web agencies. And so we really like to to come in more objectively. Because um, so, sometimes, you know, sometimes you really, that's, that's one of the benefits of working with agencies is it's not just your thinking. Um, it's it's someone more objectively thinking about uh, about your business uh, after they learn you know what your goals are and so forth. So it's almost the equivalent of the analogy of house building. You know, we just put an addition on, another addition on, a porch over there, a deck there, and at some point we decide, all right, it's time to to hit the reset button and demolish it and and restart. And, and that's really what we did. Yeah. So I mean, the concept of a landing page is that you know when you you bringing someone to your site. Um, from a specific place or, or because of a specific campaign. Uh, so let's take, you know, with Scanner, for example, so Alpha Mail send, sends, you, um, sends you to our site, you, you tend to want to make sure that you're, you've landed at the right place. You know, so if we brought him, that person, to the home page and Aaron isn't part of the home page, um, you know, any of the positioning or, or, the, or the, maybe the phrases and things that he's using, it may not look familiar and, and it's just not as inviting um, to, to a visitor. Um, so a landing page kind of is, the idea is to kind of complete the journey from where you came from to our site to land on a specific page that's really catering to where you came from. Part three of this conversation is our the, the bottom of our funnel and, and, and how we consider like the customer, the, the, the lifespan of a customer, and that is retention. And so I've got my buddy Tom B here, who uh, we got employee number two, employee number three, uh, and he has been heading up our customer service since he's been here and, and creating you know the, the best customer service we can provide. First topic I wanna talk about is uh, our customer uh, our first time customer uh, thank you card program. So I'm gonna let Tom take it away. Yeah, so uh, over the summer we started uh, putting a thank you card in everybody's first box. We now currently have stacks of these cards at our desks and whenever we've got downtime, we're, I mean, I'm, if I got an extra 15, 20 minutes, I'm gonna do 20 cards. Uh, it's fun and I think it, it really, uh, it gives the box a personal touch. Upcoming program, it's retention calls uh, that Tom's actually actively um, recruiting uh, empl new employees for. That's right. And so I want to I want to talk about that because I think it's really cool and important. If you're in Chicago and you're a fan of Tiege Hanley, you can send uh, your resume over to jobs at tiege.com and I'll definitely take a look at it. Uh, but what we wanted to do is kind of an extension of our uh, thank you cards. We want to we wanted to think of ways. Okay, how can we expand upon that goodwill? What else could we do? to make our customers feel appreciated. So what we are going to start doing, and I've done some tests of it, if you've gotten a call from me in the last uh, couple months, uh, we're actually gonna start calling our first time customers. Welcoming them to the site and you know letting them know that we care and that we're here. If they have any questions, they can feel free to reach out to us either by phone or by email or by chat. I mean, we're, we're here for you guys. So we wanna let everybody know that's coming in to teach Hamlet. Again, yeah, you're part of the family and like, Hit us up if you need anything. If, if you have skincare questions, if you've got questions about your products, like we're we're here to field them, and uh, we're we're always happy to field them. So don't be shy about it. Yeah, and then the last thing, and it's not something that me or Tom are directly working on, but it's our loyalty program. Right now, um, we 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 don't really have any ways beyond after twelve boxes, we send you a T-shirt. That's what we've been um, doing so far. And yeah. so that is our only like loyalty program right now, and it's not even a real loyalty program. It's just. You know, you hit 12, you get a t-shirt. Um, coming up, we're gonna be implementing a software that will allow you to earn points for every purchase you make and also earn points for taking other actions. And then you'll be able to redeem those initially just for discounts on, on, on your upcoming orders. And the other thing too, and a lot of you guys ask about this is, I mean, this is where you're gonna be able to earn points for referring your friends. Yes, uh, you, referrals if, a big if part you, of this. If you refer your friend and if you put the email address into uh, the the loyalty program, uh, it'll send your friend a coupon code, and it'll also add points to your account. So if they if they convert, if they convert, if they yeah. if they buy the box, then you know you'll 
you'll get those points. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great way to spread the word about Tej if you're a Tej fan, and if uh, you want to continue to be on this successful journey with us. Final part of the vlog, final guest, is my, my buddy Matt over here. Hello. Uh, you probably haven't seen him, or if you have, it was maybe when Aaron scared him for about two seconds Brief. in a previous vlog. <laughs> um, Matt works in our operations, and it's, it's a part of our business that is vital, and we just, it's not highlighted enough in this vlog. So on, on a day-to-day -day basis, I, I just want Matt to talk about kind of everything that ha happens on his side. It, there's just a lot that goes on, so I wanted to talk about that. Uh, well, thank you very much, Josh. Uh, it starts, you know, we have a team of uh, we have a team of people that make put the boxes together and they make. Which you've met in previous vlogs. We've yeah, I think you've met yeah. before. Um, so my job essentially starts. I come in, um, I check to see if all of our cancels are done from our customer service team. So that just that just means if 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 someone had a renewal that they didn't want and the customer service team can catch it mm -hmm. before we ship the box we make sure that we clear that order. So there's yep. no... It, We're not accidentally sending exactly. out a box, you know. To someone who doesn't to want it. To somebody that doesn't want it. Uh, then, you know, it goes through, you know, then I go through all of the sorting, you know, sorting out all of the different uh, levels. You know, we've been sending out, um, we have boxes with, for first time order. Yeah, when we were discussing that. Me and Tom were discussing that. So yeah, actually, yeah. that that adds a complexity to what Matt does every day. Mm -hmm. It creates three new things you have to sort for. Low or no five, five new things. Um, yeah, technically, no, yeah. one for each level. So yeah. so every since every single box has the same stuff in it, in, in essence, depending on the SKU. A SKU meaning just level one, level two, level three skincare, or level one to level two acne. Mm -hmm. um, the, the complexity is when we add a card to a box, we have to have new shelves for those boxes mm -hmm. and we have to make separate prints for those for those orders because uh, otherwise when you go to label, um, it's it's basically impossible once you print the label to tell. Yeah, pretty much it's, it's uh, you know, so sorting those out, you know, first time orders, you know, just regular renewal uh, subscription orders. Um, between the five different levels, level one, level two, level three for skincare, and then level one, level two for acne, and then we uh, then you know we separated between domestic and inter international. Um, we you know just go through every single order with a fine tooth comb. It doesn't take that long. I know it sounds very laborious, but. We go through every order to make sure there's no duplicates or you didn't accidentally order more than one system when you meant to cancel one and, you know, replace it with another. You know, we want to try to stay on top of uh, all of our guys and all of our orders just to try to make sure that they're getting exactly what they want. Well, we have a great team over there. It's small. Um, in the warehouse, and when marketing does come to us with a different idea, um, you know, like the new customer cards, the customized uh, new customer cards that, um, you know, instead of trying to be limited by what we have in front of us, you know, we have people that, you know, we put our heads together and we do whatever we can to try to see. We, we exhaust every single option, but, you know, before we do come back, and we haven't done this yet, but if we had to say no, or if we had to say that would be very difficult, or, you know, yeah. we, we try to exhaust every single option as humanly possible before we come back and say that's not going to work. All right, we've reached the end of this vlog. Uh, I'm not sure how long it's going to be yet. I haven't edited it, uh, but I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, I know it's, you know, a lot of you guys watch this for Aaron and to get, you know, a, a different side of Aaron, but I, I, I hope that some of you get, get something good out of this. Um, I'd like to thank Akin for jumping in and talking about acquisition um, with me. Uh, Rob for jumping in and talking about conversion and, and like the website optimization stuff with me. And then uh, Tom B uh, for talking retention and customer service uh, and, and as well as Matt who uh, you know is in the is is in our operations and plays you know a vital role outside of the funnel, um, but kind of a support role at each each step of our funnel. Uh, and I if I sound sick, it's because I'm getting sick. And so uh, you know I appreciate you guys watching, and uh, you'll be back to your normally scheduled Aaron Marino Sunday programming next week. I almost forgot. 
We love you more than our double monk strap shoes. I had to say it for Aaron. I'd probably uh, get disowned if I didn't say that. 